Hey everybody, welcome to the boat tour of GEM. So GEM is a performance cruising incorporated Gemini 105 MC, originally built in the USA and she was completed in 2006. Uh, she is a 34 foot length overall and a very similar length of the waterline. It was molded in two parts, being the deck and everything above, uh, being one part, and then the hulls being the second part, and then put together and sufficiently glued and bolted the two halves, forming the one entire structure. So stepping aboard, we go straight to the anchor locker, which is holding currently 60 meters of chain and it has a windlass and the chain is 10 millimeters. We also have a 10 kg Viking anchor. Also on deck, on the port foredeck, we have a big sail locker, which for us holds uh, inflatable kayak, inflatable paddleboard, two additional sails, as well as a couple of gas bottles and some artificial grass for the dogs to do their business when we are not in the marina. We have little seats, <laughs> obviously, for chilling and watching the dolphins, hopefully. And we have the Genoa sail on a furler, and we have the screecher track, which runs from port or starboard bows. And that is for the screecher sail, uh, which is quite similar to a Code Zero. In terms of catamarans, Gem is fairly narrow. She's got a beam of 14 foot or 4.27 meters, which for us is works out pretty beneficially because uh, we don't get charged catamaran rates in most of the marinas. Uh, we actually fit into a monohull slip. She's mast head sloop rigged. And another great feature for us is that she's set up with a furling mainsail, which is very unusual, and she's actually the only example that I've found of these particular catamarans uh, set up in such a way. So that was quite a factor for us when deciding to buy or not. These hatches from the cockpit open up, as you can see, and they offer a lot of airflow as well as additional vision from when we're inside the cockpit and looking out. They also help, of course, to see the sail trim. Because she is fairly narrow in beam, the sides or the walkways down the sides of the hulls are fairly narrow. It's not impossible to walk down them, but I typically just walk on the upper level. Here we have stern lockers at the top of the sugar scoops. This one is just holding additional lines and ropes and some cleaning materials. They're pretty big and definitely adequate for what we need them for. This is Peting. Hey, what's up everybody? And yeah, at times it's the most comfortable seat on the boat. Just below it, there's extra access to the engine. It's a little bit dark, but we can have a look. There's also access from the cockpit to the engine, which is a Yanma 30 horsepower installed, I think it was, in 2015. And it's got fairly low engine hours. This is the Select leg. Sonic leg drive, built in the UK. Moving across the stern, we have another storage locker. And we have solar panels on both the coach roof as well as on the davits and our pretty new high-fueled classic 290. 
and our outboard which is a Tohatsu 9.8 And this is a view forward from the port hall. The cockpit is fully enclosed with this canvas enclosure. While it still offers us excellent visibility as well as protection from the elements. Uh, we've had it up all winter and it will be coming down in the summer I would imagine. This is just a view of the cockpit. Underneath those cushions, there is extra storage as well as a gas cabinet. At the helm, we have the instruments which you would expect to see as well as the windless control and stepping in there's no such companion way and just a very small 8 inch step into the saloon which is light and airy with very good visibility almost from all sides So going down a couple of steps into the galley. It's long enough for, with enough surface uh, for us to prepare meals and wash dishes. And just about enough storage space for us also. I think this boat's probably adequate for two people and maybe two kids entering the main cabin we have once again a lot of natural light and windows we have a hatch above us also, which allows very good air circulation. This is Sailor's little cave, and it stores some of our jackets and other clothes which we hang. It's fairly deep, probably about a meter and a half. Beside it is another deep uh, cavity, which we also store clothes in. And that's the view from our bed. So the bed is a queen size bed, which is 1.6 meters by 1.9. And it's big enough for the two of us and the dogs jump on and off. And we sleep very comfortably. So going to the aft cabin, which at this point is just storage for us. It's looking much better than what it was just a couple of weeks ago. And once it's sorted out, it will be a very comfortable additional sleeping space. Alright, moving to the port side, there's a chart table, 
and below it is our battery storage as well as inverter charger solar charger This is our chart table. This is a deep storage inside here, but it's full, so we'll keep that closed. And this is another little storage space, which is not particularly deep, but it serves a purpose. These are the centerboard bolts and we use these tools which is basically a winch handle and a spanner to drop and raise the centerboards the draft of the boat is half a meter with the centerboards up and one and a half meters with them dropped down and of course the centerboards in both the port and starboard hull so inside the heads or the bathroom uh, it's quite nice well laid out with decent amount of storage This is our little shower and this is a perspex divider which basically separates the toilet area from the showering area very simple in design Now we make our way to the port aft cabin which we are hoping that the starboard one will look like this soon rather sooner than later and yeah what can I say it's simple but it's very comfortable and a good place to rest once again it's got some light and very nice amount of airflow And back up the stairs and we're in the saloon sitting area once again so just some closing thoughts for us these Gemini's tick a lot of boxes especially for what we were looking for in a boat uh, some of these include simply that it is a very basic boat to sail and to operate it has simple systems and it's also got a shallow draft which allows us to get into many ports in the Mediterranean where some other boats are not able to access as well as some uh, shallower rivers and canals she's relatively fast and she sails well on light winds due to her screecher sail and 150% Genoa as well as the centerboards which are adjustable allows her to sail well into wind the big factors were that she's set up for solo sailing or short-handed sailing with uh, the furling mainsail as well as the fact that she can fit into a single slip or a monohull slip and we don't get charged the exorbitant catamaran rates also doesn't hurt that she has a nice big bed up front and two double aft cabins which for us uh, serve as storage all right so that brings us to the end of this video okay so if you made it to the end of the video thank you very much for watching if you have any specific questions about the boat you can ask us in the comments 
and we will do our best to respond to you.